Ross, please. Right. I'm good without the water. So tonight I'd like to draw our attention to a slightly bigger picture. If uh, you're aware, obviously we have a big issue with climate change. So the title I've given this is, Should We Be Worried About Farting Cows? Budgeting concerns surrounding how we pay for this long-term plan need to be replaced with fundamental questioning of the assumptions we have made in believing this long-term plan is necessary. We must now question the IPCC climate change narrative that prioritizes sustainability. Failing to stand on solid ground of facts could now negate ever being able to stand our ground. Soon questioning the sustainability narrative may be considered unsustainable. Sustainability is simply that which promotes sustainable development, the nebulous balance between social equity, environment and ecology. Our government has committed us to reducing emissions by 2030 and carbon neutrality by 2050 in alignment with COP27, the Paris Agreement, the C40 Cities Programme, UN Agenda 2030 and UN Agenda 2050. If we simply look at council budgeting, we will at some point find our children living in the proposed smart, carbon dioxide-free, 15-minute city of Christchurch. Under the all-seeing eye of Stargate or similar AI, UN 100 envisages that every aspect of life, including the sustainability of our actions, be inventory monitored and controlled in real time under fifth-generation technology. Expanding the proposed metaverse, as they call it, through sustainable action, of course, will be rewarded. Our nudge unit, which many people aren't aware of, the Behavioural Insights team under the government's Department of the Prime Minister and Cabinet, is presently guiding us towards increasingly sustainable patterns of behaviour that may someday be our only choice. Behaviours deemed non-sustainable could result in being locked out of your world, which is known as ghosting. The central bank digital currency and digital ID are waiting in the wings. Skylink, 5G base units in every suburb, and LED streetlight system with smart modules that facilitate such things as excessive use of CCTV and automatic number plate recognition, as well as utilising technology that has never been proven safe and seems to involve radar that is provably not safe. There are many reasons why 6G may not be necessary to achieve this level of control of all aspects of life in New Zealand. The long-term plan is both the floor plan for this model and the mechanism for introducing crippling personal and council debt that will commit councils across New Zealand to further UN-fed sustainability demands on their resources and on our rates. Our Smart Cities Council partner city is Vittoria Gastiz in Spain. Christchurch City Council representatives have visited and their Smart Cities experts have visited Christchurch. Their experts continue to provide our council with advice on such things as thought leadership and citizen engagement, which is getting us on board with the plan, Our Common Future, which was in, basically set up in 1987. As you've seen, as you can see on the uh, screen, ALGIM, the Association of Local Government Information Management, uh, the Smart Cities Council, Australia, New Zealand website, states that all New Zealand councils have signed up to be in partnership with the Smart Cities Council. You can see it written up there. We have to look at the overall global United Nations agenda for 2030 and put a stop to its local application at council level that is taking place under this partnership. We must put a stop to 5G until proven safe. We must distance New Zealand from organisations that include the World Health Organisation, United Nations, Smart Cities Council, the C40 Cities Programme, BIS, the International Bank for Settlements, and look at the recent activities of Al Gim and the Smart Cities Council Australia and New Zealand in directing everything from urban densification, city resilience and traffic calming measures, which I will mention at the end if I get time, to thought leadership and citizen engagement under the overall plan called Our Common Future. Our assumptions are important. And this long-term plan has to be exposed for what it is, a small cog in a global plan, United Nations Agenda 21, applied locally as a land use plan, United Nations Agenda 2030, through our councils in context of an overall plan, UN Agenda 2050, leading to the UN proposed AI World Society. Christchurch City Council must now stand on the solid ground of understanding the bigger picture and on our behalf stand their ground. Other councils will follow. I'd just like to mention on behalf of uh, Bronte Barber's talk, traffic calming measures, I've been told by our council, are being used, that is, massively reduced speed limits, speed bumps, parking restrictions, extended bus stops, cycleways, and many other 
uh, traffic calming measures in order to make it purposely as difficult as possible to get across town. Sequencing of lights is also set that way. I've had this directly from the council. Now, when Bronte asked the question, no one stood up and said, actually, we're trying to make it as difficult as possible to get across town. Tim. Yeah, um, I know that the, uh, the um, road cushions on Tennyson Street were put in after two children were hit. We have done a number of things in the south of Christchurch around St Martin's School, um, Kashmir Primary School and a number of other schools and motorists have no comprehension or care of the communities they're driving through. So I would disagree, maybe with the lights in Central City they are, I have no idea. But in my area we have made it very, very hard, hopefully, so motorists have to slow down for the sake of the community. I think you've misunderstood. I, I don't, I'm not saying that there isn't some safety involved, and obviously you've given some great examples. The reality is when I've spoken to council, I have, for example, Tony Moore, he explained to me, I said to him, are you trying to make it as difficult as possible for motorists to easily get down Manchester Street? And he said, yes, that is our goal. I spoke to a police officer who actually was trying to drive his own car down Victoria Street. Um, he recognised he'd made a mistake in going that way, but he uh, found that the sequencing of the lights was atrocious for people getting across town. So he went into the council and they told him, our traffic calming measures are being used to make it as difficult as possible for people to drive across town in furtherance of reducing car use with respect to 2050 when we envisage no personal car use. Did, Jake, did you have a question? If you had any thoughts on, say, 15-minute cities and making our neighbourhoods more walkable and... Sure. So the 15-minute cities programme basically is just turning our, our cities into villages. Vittoria Gastiz is our partnership smart city. In Vittoria Gastiz, everyone lives in the same size apartment. No one has a car. Um, there are a few exceptions, but generally no one has a car. It's difficult to get between villages. Um, basically, we have to look at the terminology. So the idea of uh, the passive... Uh, sustainable behaviour in terms of traffic is taking the bus, taking the train. Um, the active sustainable behaviour is cycling and walking. This programme has been set up across the world. So in uh, Warwickshire in England, for example, um, there was a carrot instead of a stick that was used and you could actually win prizes by recording your sustainable behaviour in terms of travel across Warwickshire and uh, as opposed to taking public, as opposed to taking your car. And the central bank digital currency, which they've trialed over there using NatWest Bank, basically it was set up so that it carried a carbon dioxide allowance for each transaction. And that was also basically based on nudge theory as we're guided towards more sustainable behaviors. So basically it, it, with the NatWest program, it's an app you have on your phone if you're with NatWest, you get informed not only of your carbon dioxide allowance for the transaction you just engaged in, for example, buying a pair of trousers, if you bought them secondhand, it would have been less carbon dioxide in terms of the allowance. Mm. And uh, you basically would be given advice on a more sustainable behavior. In other words, basically buying that. Thanks. So uh, the reality that we're looking at is the AI world society under an AI, which literally uh, we're looking at Stargate at the moment for 2028 going online, which sits above the fifth generation technology that we're installing across town. We, we get it, I think. I think you do. I don't yeah. think you do if you, want, no, if you well, don't want to yeah, know about we, it. We, we, yep. You Thank were talking you. to me beforehand, yes. and you agreed that we are getting more and more devices on our smart system. We are, yes. Smart modules. Yes, we are. And it involves technologies that you yourself said you don't understand. I don't understand all of them, but that's why I've got people here, well, we've got people here to help us get into it. So th thank you very much for your submission. Does anyone else have any questions? Thank you.